The day after, how will the conversation about terrorism change? We talked to political writer John Ibbotson. Also, Canada strong. A look at how Canadians are mourning and rallying. I'm Afan Chaudhry. Welcome to Globe Now. So, a strong message from Prime Minister Stephen Harper. He spoke to Canadians about the need to strengthen our resolve and redouble our efforts in the fight against terrorism. So, how will the conversation in Canada about terrorism change? Joining us now is John Ibbotson. He is a Globe columnist currently on leave at the Centre for International Governance Innovation, where he's a senior fellow. Hi, John. Good afternoon. What has struck you the most about Stephen Harper's message to Canadians in the wake of yesterday's shooting? How measured it is. Um, I was in Washington uh, on 9-11, and I watched the American reaction to those attacks, which, of course, were exponentially more serious than the attacks that uh, we suffered yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, there was rage. There was fear. And the president of the United States, George W. Bush, exploited that rage and fear to essentially declare that the United States was at war, a war on terror. Um, in the short term, it rallied the nation around the president. In the long term, it destroyed his presidency. And I think what Stephen Harper is trying to do is calibrate here to, to stiffen the national resolve, yes, but not to use this attack as a, a drum to beat in order to whip up fervor for, a, say, an expanded mission in Iraq, because he knows, he's watched, that in the long term, uh, that can do both the government and the nation more harm than good. Mm. So how do you think the conversation on terrorism is going to change in this country? Well, it's going to become a very active debate because we have anti-terrorism legislation uh, that's going to come before Parliament. It was actually due to come before Parliament yesterday. Um, that legislation will no doubt um, increase the powers of the National Police Services and CSIS in order to surveil and uh, intercept uh, possible threats. It will also compromise civil liberties because you can't have one without the other. And of course, the government will be forced square behind that legislation. It introduces, it will be introducing it after all. The real question then is where will the NDP and the Liberals be on it? Uh, they might have been expected to oppose it uh, on the grounds that it goes too far perhaps in infringing on civil liberties. But that's going to be a more difficult argument for them to make in the light of yesterday's events. Mm. You mentioned the U.S. example in George W. Bush. I mean, who do you think Stephen Harper will look to as an example of how to tackle this threat? No one, because everyone who has tackled it in the past has seen their government brought down uh, as a result of it. I'm thinking of Tony Blair in Great Britain uh, and, of course, George W. Bush in the United States. They weren't literally defeated, but their reputations were forever tarnished. And he's not going to want to go there, which is why I say he's going to try to take a measured response, uh, a calm line. Anyway, it's the Canadian thing to do. Um, he's not going to try to whip up a, a national hysterical frenzy. Um, again, that's also not the, the Canadian thing to do. And anyway, he knows in the long term there are real perils in um, taking too extreme a path um, mm -hmm. as a result of terrorist attacks. But John, uh, he's still trying to gear Canadians up for a larger fight. How ready are Canadians for that? Oh, I think we're very ready. After all, um, you know, we were in Afghanistan for the better part of a decade. We've suffered, um, and the Canadian forces suffered more than 150 losses in that battle. Um, none of us are innocent. I know I myself said yesterday that in some way Ottawa has lost its innocence. And it's true in terms of the kind of lax security that we enjoyed on the Hill. That's going to be gone. But this is not an innocent nation. This is a nation that went through the War Measures Act. Um, in 1970. This is a nation that has gone through uh, more than one war since then. I think we're ready for it. Mm -hmm. I think the important thing is not to panic, not to overreact, and I think it's in our national DNA um, to not overreact. So, I mean, you know, in some ways, you know, when we look at the U.S. and the U.S. experience, we sometimes talk about, you know, the war on terror language and say, you know, that's the U.S., that's not us. It sounds like your feeling is that we'll never really go to that extent. No, it's never going to be a you're with us or you're against us approach. That said, this is going to be a wedge issue. This is going to be something that the politicians in Ottawa debate over the course of the next year. It could even be a major issue in the, uh, in the election uh, next October because the Conservatives are clearly on one side of the issue and the opposition is on the other. Remember, the Liberals and the NDP opposed the mission in Iraq. And the Conservatives are going to say that these attacks show the need for Canada to be vigilant, not just at home, but overseas and confronting Islamic State. And they're going to use that 
to try to put the opposition parties offside with the Canadian public. And you know what? They're going to succeed, at least at first. The question is what happens six months from now or eight months from now, and that will depend on events. I mean, that's what I was curious about. I mean, a national election fought on national security. What do you think about that? It won't be just on national security. It'll be on leadership. At least the Conservatives will want it to be on leadership. Who do you trust to protect the economy in difficult times? Who do you trust to keep us safe in difficult times? Who has the experience and the proven track record? Stephen Harper. The NDP, and especially Justin Trudeau, in, for the Liberals, will say, no, it's time for change. It's time for renewal. It's time for a new path. And they'll have to define that path um, in, in that election campaign. So I don't think it'll be just about uh, national security. Okay. It'll, be, it'll all be wrapped up to the question of leadership versus time for a change. John, thank you so much. Hey, it's my pleasure. Well, we want to hear from you. How do you feel about Canada needing to redouble its efforts in the fight against terrorism? And what do you think that should look like? Tweet us at Globe Now. So, there is a national outpouring of grief and strength. And that will continue in the days and weeks to come. Here's a look at how Canadians are expressing their grief and rallying together via Twitter in the wake of the tragedy.